Number 24, a child's electronic toy is applied by three 1.58 volt alkaline cells having internal resistances of 0.02 ohms in series with a uh, point, uh, sorry, 1.53 volt uh, carbon zinc dry cell having a 0.1 in ohm internal resistance. The load resistance is 10 ohms. Letter A, draw a circuit diagram. All right, so let's pick it apart. You got three batteries and they are connected in a series. Did they say that? No, they did not say that. Uh, however, though, that is the assumption. All right, they, these batteries are connected in series and the reason why is because voltages connected in series add up to one another. So it's able to provide uh, more total voltage basically to the cell. All right, and I meant, I said cell, I think I meant to say circuit, but you know, you know, we're good. And then it says, um, it has a load resistance, right? So what the heck does that even mean? This is where the practice comes in handy because you got to see the words asked or the questions asked in different ways. A load resistance is the same thing as saying, hey, there's something on this circuit, okay, that has a resistance when the load is supplied, okay? Um, oh, oh, what's going on? So basically, this is the resistance of the load. Right, whatever this is. And um, they tell us that it is uh, 10 ohms, okay? They also mentioned that uh, we have, uh, let's see, three, okay, in series with eight. No, we have four. If you read it carefully, <laughs> if you actually read it, we have four batteries. So that's fine. So I'm going to add one down here. All right, let's add one. Sorry. So this is getting a little confusing. Let me highlight uh, three of them. One, two, three, and let me highlight the fourth, which I don't know that I'm highlighting. And I'm like, where the heck did I even do? And then here is the uh, fourth one. Okay, so there's three, oh my goodness. So all all of these ones in, uh, in uh, red, I guess are 1.58 volts. I'll highlight that in red. Okay, great. And then um, this one is 1.53. Okay, internal resistance here is going to be 0 0.02. Eh, I should have written this out before, but what are you going to do? EMF. Uh, this is going to be 1.53 volts. And um, the internal resistance there is going to be 0.1 ohms. I hope that was entertaining. Um, now, draw a circuit diagram. So here it is. That's the circuit diagram. All right. Now, and let me just make sure I have the right number. Three alkaline in series with A. Okay. I think that looks good. All right. Let's move forward. Uh, what, what current flows? So uh, we check, you know, take a look at number 22, 23. I went through this in, in detail to how to think about it. So um, since all of these elements are connected in series to one another, we know that current will be constant in series. In other words, if I can find the total current supplied to this circuit, then that means that the current supplied or the current flowing through each of these batteries and the current flowing through this load is going to be equal to one another. So I'm going to find the total, or I'm going to write it down and see. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. Let's see. The total current supplied to uh, the circuit will be equal to the total voltage supplied to the entire circuit, not the terminal voltage. Don't, don't confuse that V sub T with terminal voltage. I'm mentioning it's total voltage divided then by the total resistance of the entire circuit. So the total voltage now is going to be a summation of all of the EMFs of these batteries. Why? Well, because voltage is added in series. Okay, it's not constant. The current is constant in series. The voltage gets added together. So we have three EMFs. Now it's the theoretical max because I'm talking about the entire circuit, the batteries and all. So it's three times the EMF of that first type of battery, which is uh, 1.58 plus then uh, 1.53, because that would represent the total voltage supplied to the entire cell, right? Divided then by the total voltage. Now look, all these elements are connected in series and therefore, look, the resistances all add up. All right, that's how you find the total resistance there. So you're simply going to take three, multiply it by that internal resistance of 0.02, 
plus then the internal resistance of the blue battery, 0.1, plus the load resistance of 10. And that's how we're gonna find the total current, okay? And then, so three times 1.58 plus 1.53 divided by now parenthesis, three times 0.02 plus 0.1 plus 10. So I get a total current here of about 0.617 amps. Now remember that total current is the current flowing through each of those elements, the four batteries and the load, and therefore the current flowing through the load or current supplied to the load, whatever, what or what current flows, <laughs> however you wanna call it, whatever you wanna call it is gonna be all the same, 0.617 amps, all right? That's letter B. And uh, letter C, how much, is, how much power is supplied to the load? So let's get rid of all this work. All right. Hope you're having a good semester so far. All right. You're like, anything's better as long as I'm getting closer to the end of physics, right? No, no. Physics is fun. All right. This stuff is a little cool. A little bit. A little bit. Just give it a little credit. So power supplied uh, to the load. I probably can do this in a bunch of ways. But the easiest way to do it is take a look at what I have already. So power supplied to load will be equal to the current supplied to the load squared multiplied by the resistance uh, of the load not squared. Just raised to the first power. So there's the formula. Uh, so simply just plug it all in, right? That's a formula we've used now for a while. 0.617 squared. I'm going to use the exact value when I do it in the calculator. All right. Um, and then times the uh, resistance, which was 10. So the power supplied or delivered to the load or dissipated by the load, whatever, you know, there's they all mean the same thing. Take that value squared, multiply it by 10. So I get about 3.81, 3.81 watts. And that's that. All right, so that's letter, letter C. So I'll raise that little question mark. It's not unknown anymore. It is known. All right, so let's get rid of all this. And what do we got next? Letter D. Oh, are we going to do the whole alphabet? Um, letter D, what is the internal resistance of the dry cell if it goes bad, resulting in only 0.5 watts being supplied to the load? Okay, of the dry cell. So which one's the dry cell? Let's go back. Three alkaline cells with a 1.5 volt, okay, 1.53 volt dry cell. So here's the dry. This one's the dry one. So now what we have to do is we have to find the internal resistance of this guy. All right, it's not 0.1 anymore. It's going to be some other value. And they told us that the power has now uh, been lowered, uh, that there's less power supplied to this load. Now, that should make sense. Um, well, it should make sense. It doesn't really say. But what should happen to the resistance, the internal resistance inside of that battery if the, low, if the power supplied to this external load is going to go down? Well, wouldn't it make sense that the internal goes up, right? If there's more resistance in this battery... Current cannot flow as easily. If current can't flow, not as much current can be supplied to this load. If not as much power can be supplied, excuse me, current can be supplied to that load, according to the formula over here on the bottom right, as current goes down, power goes down by the square of the current. Hmm. All right. So, all right. So um, we have to find that out. So how do we do that? So we're given the power, right? So I think you might have been able to track. Actually, I kind of explained it. just didn't even realize it. Um, but uh, that's, I think, going to be the logic we're going to use, okay? So the power supplied to the load is equal to the current supplied uh, to the load multiplied then by the resistance of the load. Now, the power they told us to the load is going to be 0.5 watts. The current supplied to the load is unknown, and the resistance of the load is still going to be 10. That hasn't changed because that didn't go bad. So now solve it for the current, all right, to the load. So 0.5 divided by 10, and then take the square root. All right, square root of 0.5 now. So this works out to be current flowing through the load is going to be 0 0.224 about amps. Now, so let's just get rid of this stuff. So this new power was 0 0.05. This was uh, 0 0.224 amps. All right, and now you have to remember that, just like we said before, the current uh, supplied the load is the same and constant to all elements in series. So it's going to be the current flowing through each of these four batteries as well. 
All right, so now we have to remember how we uh, use that total uh, current now that we found it, right? So basically remember that this uh, current flowing through the load is the same as the total current. So what I can do is I can create this kind of relationship, all right? Remember that the how we found it before uh, was we took that total current and we realized that it is going to be equal to the total voltage over the total resistance, right? Total, 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 total. So I'm using basically Ohm's law, all right? So now I know this number, and that's why I'm talking about this formula. So this is I sub T, all right? The total current is going to equal the total voltage. Now remember, we just add these guys up, right? The total voltage supplied to the circuit was the same as the equivalent uh, uh, voltage basically supplied, and it's just the EMFs all added. So it's going to be 3 times the EMF of 1.58, right? Because you got three of these guys, plus then uh, 1 times, so just 1.53, all then divided now by the total resistance. And they're all in series, so they're all going to add. So you got three re internal resistances of 0.02 coming from the red batteries. Uh, plus then a new unknown internal resistance. It is no longer this. So I'll write a little R. Plus then the resistance of the load is 10. They're all added together because it's in series. See the resistances are added. So now we do know the total current. That's just what we found before. So erase this. And now it's going to be 0.22, oops, 224. Now all this is is just solving for that little r. All right, so 0.224 is equal to, so I'm going to do 3.1, uh, one, what? Three times 1.58 plus 1.53. So the numerator is 6.27 all over then. 3 times 0.02 plus 10. So we get 10.06. 10.06 plus R. Just do a little switcheroo. Bring this whole denominator on out. And then all you got to do is subtract the 10.06 from both sides. That would go bye-bye, leaving you with just R. And now you're going to do 6.27 divided then by 10.06. Oh, excuse me. Whoops. Divided not by 10.06, not by that. That's why I always got to go back and check. Uh, divided then by that uh, 0.224. I'm going to use that exact value from the history in the calculator. And then subtract out the 10.06. So I get about 17 point, well, I guess if you round three sig figs, whatever, you're going to get about 18. All right, uh, ohms. And that's then the new internal resistance. So it went up by quite a lot. All right, guys, I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, if, uh, if this helped you out at all, help us out. Hit that subscribe button, tell your friends, hit the like button. Thank you so much.